this is lap 49. Yes, and looking at the way Senna is struggling to catch Lauda, I think probably with all the bumping and banging around, that his car isn't quite in the same top form that it was before, and uh, who can blame it? So, Senna remains to be seen. We'll watch that gap uh, if and when he can get past Lauda, but he, that seems a big enough problem for him right now without worrying about... Rosberg out ahead. Rosberg, of course, will know from his pit uh, the gap, the relative differences, and, will, and is in the happy position of being able to control the race from the front. And three out of the top six are in their last Grand Prix in one way or another. Rosberg, the leader, is in his last Grand Prix for Williams. Lauda in the red and white McLaren is in his last Grand Prix before retirement. Derek Warwick in fifth position is in his last Grand Prix for Renault and we wonder whether he's going to get a drive next year. Incidentally, while you watch the battle for second between Lauda and Senna, I will tell you that it has been officially announced that the Tolman team are going to use German BMW engines next year and that Theo Farby has re-signed for the team, which will be known as the Benetton team next year. Nicky Lauda, this is pre-recorded just while we were in commercial. He tucked in behind him on the main street. He came alongside him and he did him under braking. So Ayrton Senna has climbed up the slippery ladder that he's been on all day. He's got himself back into second position. Kiki Rosberg still leads. Ayrton Senna is second. Nicky Lauda is third. Michele Alboreto is fourth. Derek Warwick is fifth. And we'll go back to Murray Walker and James Hunt. Now they got to come back. It's a question of whether Senna can actually catch him when Rosberg is, is trying that out. So we will watch and wait and see. Mark Sura is out of the Australian Grand Prix. So is Bootson, so is Prost, so is Tombe and Jones. Elio De Angelis, who was black flagged. Nelson Piquet, Martini and uh, Derek Warwick is still in fifth position behind Alboreto. Warwick has been lapped, Alboreto hasn't, and you see the gap between Rosberg and Senna is a bit less than it was. It was oh, some 30 seconds, and I was hypothesizing that Rosberg would slow up a bit. We don't know whether that gap reduction is due to Rosberg slowing up or Senna crowding on the pace. Derek Warwick is in sixth position, my apologies, because Jacques Lafitte has got ahead of him in sixth place, and Senna is, is really trying now. You can see, having got ahead of Lauda, he's pulling away. I don't like the look of Senna's rear tyres. I think the car's been oversteering a bit. It looks a little bit loose at the back, and it looks as if his rear tyres have maybe grained up a little. But uh, let's hope not, because it's going to be exciting watching him chase Rosberg. Lauda is still holding on very well behind him, and in fact both of them are catching Rosberg, so I suspect, yes, that left rear tail that we're looking at now, you see the grain, the tread should be shiny all the way across, and his right rear. However, at the moment, he may, he may be able to clean that tyre up by looking after it, because sometimes you can... Uh, once it's worn down a little bit, it will smooth up again. The tyre should be smooth, not ripply. That, that, that uh, dark, darker effect where it isn't shiny is where it's rippling, the rubber is rippling, and that means that it's not giving the maximum possible grip. Piquet, by the way, that went, who went out quite a long time ago, suddenly had his cockpit filled with smoke, and knowing the danger of fire in what is virtually a high-speed mobile petrol tanker, wisely stopped and his teammate Mark Sura had his left tyre go and in the process of trying to do something about it the engine stopped and he couldn't get it going again and Lauda's definitely catching Senna yes absolutely and I think that is because Senna is in trouble with his rear tyres and Rosberg is back in back in the pits uh, yes Kenji Rosberg back in the pits this is amazing now let's have a look and see what the problem is He's obviously concerned about tyres, right front off, left rear off, all of them off. He's got a very considerable lead, of course, 28 seconds, and he can still put on new tyres and get out again. But this is the second time that Keke Rosberg has been in for tyres. 
and problem with one of the front wheels, the left front is jammed on, and Senna has gone through. So Senna is back in the lead, but I tell you what, Nicky Lauda is right behind Senna, and Lauda, I suspect, is the healthier of those two, because he's not in title. I think Senna's going to have to come back in, unless he can nurse them, and Rosberg is probably in range to catch them, especially on a fresh set, if he looks after them. He's going to, he will know, now Rosberg is experienced, he will know that he's got to bring these tyres in gently because that's what Senna didn't do and that's probably what he didn't do last time. Those rear tyres on Senna's are being a bother. And Lauda, whose tyres look very nice and is taking it very steadily as he does, is suddenly, with conservative application, looking very much one of the a joint favourite to win this race, if not favourite. Well, my problem is I want them all to win, but wouldn't it be marvellous if Nicky Lauda won the last Grand Prix of his career? And he certainly could do it. Here he comes in the McLaren. That would certainly seal the Constructors' Championship in the nicest possible way for the McLaren team. And wouldn't that be a perfect lesson for Ayrton and Senna, the, old, the wily old champion, showing him just what you can do with brains rather than brawn. And because uh, we know that Ayrton, and you can even see his car snaking on the straight. These rear tires are, are definitely causing him trouble. And uh, that will be a lovely lesson for Senna, because Senna is definitely a future champion. And uh, Nicky Lauda will just give him a nice last time out. There is only 11.8 seconds between Ayrton Senna in the lead and Keki Rosberg, who is in third place on the 55th lap. We are going to see an absolutely superb closing lap situation between these three great drivers with, Ke with Nicky Lauda now right on the rear on the gearbox of Senna's car and he's in a good position to nip out of the slipstream of the Lotus on the straight and get through into the lead in the last Grand Prix of 1985 here at Adelaide in a race that's been full of excitement, drama and interest and Lauda's in, a, in not quite the position now to go through but not far off it. Yes, I think Nicky made a tactical error there. I think he should have dropped back a little bit as they came onto the straight and swung it in much harder because he, he he does need to pass Senna soon because Rosberg when he brings these new new set of tyres in with only uh, some 10 plus seconds there are 11 seconds in it Ros Lauda really needs to get past Senna and get away because Senna will be holding him up now and Rosberg will catch him too quickly. Nicky Lauda of course hasn't been in for uh, new tyres He's, he's a wonderfully smooth driver, is Nicky. And if anybody can make a set of tyres last the whole race, it will be him. We, he may well be on the B compound, which is, mar which is harder than the C compound, which is the softest of all, and that could give him the advantage. And now he's certainly getting close to being in a position to draft past Senna on the Brabham Straight, the longest and fastest straight of any street circuit, where they do over 300 kilometres, 200 miles an hour. It's this corner. He wants to be dropped back a little bit. There's Nelson PK in the pits now. Lada is a bit close. He wants to get a, a slingshot. And that's uh, that he's better positioned than he was on the last lap, but I think he's going to be able to duck out. Yeah, here he comes. Senna's not respond, not fighting back because he knows that he's in tire trouble. And Lauda looking supremely smooth. Of course, the other thing is Lauda can afford now to drive hard on his tires, which the others can't because they've got that much meat off them. They don't have the same potential heat build-up. There we now, you see that the tread faces on Lauda's tyres are nice and smooth. There's no grading and compare it with the left rear of Ayrton Senna's. Although I think Senna's tyres are cleaning up. They look better now than they did a few laps ago. And it is possible to rescue a, a damaged tyre if you're very careful with it. And I think that, that is what Ayrton Senna's trying to do. Lap 57 and in his 171st Grand Prix after not qualifying well, being 16th on the starting grid, 
Nicky Lauda has shown all the brilliance that we know and has driven through to the lead with 25 laps to go if the race goes the full 82 lap distance as opposed to two hours. And Lauda now coming up to the Ferrari in front of him. You can see how he's pulling away from Ayrton Senna who has clearly got a problem. And Lauda goes out and I can't see whether it's Johansson or Alvaretto. I think it must be, it is Alvaretto that he's passing. And Alvaretto is in fourth position. So now Lauda in the lead has lapped everybody up to the third place man who is Keki Rosberg. And uh, I will give you the gap between Lauda and Rosberg, which was last time I took it, before Rosberg's tyres had warmed up, 11.98 seconds. And it was actually Stefan Johansson that Lauda passed and not Alboreto. Now, here's Lauda, and he's completing the lap now. And the gap between Lauda and Senna is just about two seconds. Here is Rosberg. I see him as Stefan Johansson is caught by Senna. And the gap now is 10.3 seconds. Rosberg is gaining. Kenny Rosberg in third position on his second set of new tyres. There he is. He's catching the new race leader, Nicky Lauda. That looks to me as if Rosberg did what others have failed to do in this race. He used his head then, and even he the first time, because he went out on a new set and ruined them. He had the uh, intelligence and experience to come straight in and not soldier on, and he brought these ones in slowly now, and now he's flying. He waited for a few laps before he really put his foot down, and that could well uh, win him the race. He's not, he's, Lauda is well within his range. Six cars on the first lap. Race leader, Nicky Lauda. And off he goes. Nicky Lauda's lost it. And that, and he's completely smashed the front of the car. And he, he will reverse out because it looks to me as though he hasn't damaged the left front suspension. Let's look at it again. And let's watch Ayrton Senna. Lauda off, up onto the curbing, trying to avoid the concrete wall. But he's smashed the left suspension. Lauda is out. Well, I don't know what happened there. He may have just knocked through it, but it almost looks as if the car snapped out of control so quickly, something may have broken on it. It did seem to snap and turn sharp left. And there is Ayrton Senna, and Rosberg is in sight behind him now. And Derek Warwick, who had stood the chance of moving up a place, has gone out of the race as well. It's all happening. Adelaide is indeed alive because now Ayrton Senna is back in the lead. There is Derek Warwick out of his last race for Renault and we have the prospect now of seeing Keki Rosberg catching Ayrton Senna and taking the lead. Senna with a new nose on the Lotus. There is Stefan Johansson in the background. You remember what the gap was? 11 seconds. You've just seen it's 5.6. We're on lap 20, 59, 23 laps to go. The closing stages of the Australian Grand Prix are going to be something to see because look at Rosberg in the background behind Johansson. The gap is visibly closing. Kenny Rosberg, the 36-year-old Finn who lives in Ibiza, flies his own jet plane, is immensely wealthy, a great wheeler dealer, is about to try and catch Senna and I think succeed. Yes, absolutely, and uh, there'll be no need for his pit to signal him gaps now. He can see Ayrton Senna. He's, he'd like a clear view of him so that uh, without Johansson in the way. But I don't think he'll be too worried. He knows he's going to dispense with the Ferrari probably when they get back onto the straight at uh, halfway round this current lap. And then he'll have clear out. Senna still bouncing it over the curbs. But uh, that, uh, that wasn't too serious on the apex of the corner. Have a look at his rear tyres. You see the right rear is all grained across. It's all rippled across and that is not a healthy rear tyre at the moment and he's now under too much pressure from Rosberg really to, to take the time to slow, the, to slow it down and try and clean them up. 
Meantime, let's think about the Constructors' Championship. Both McLarens are out of the race and therefore out of the points. Alvaretto is in third place on four points. His teammate, Johansson, is still running, albeit in tenth position, but might still finish in the points. McLaren started this race ten points ahead of Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship. It could turn out to be a very close thing, but not as close as it's getting in the race for the lead on lap 60 out of 82. The gap is down to 3.9 seconds and less than that, I suspect. Senna goes over the line looking into his mirror. Rosberg goes over the line looking at Senna. 3.5 seconds into the S's goes the fin at some 140 k's up to Wakefield turn chasing Senna 110 k's second gear stay in second gear go up to East Terrace Bend the left hander at 110 k's on to Flinders Bend still in second at 110 accelerate up third gear fourth gear 150 k's Senna still in front up to the market's turn the right hander 150 k's back to second for stag turn the right hander which they're approaching now 110 k's up to third gear fourth gear fifth gear down rundle road 150 kilometers an hour third gear into brewery bend which they're approaching and through now down into the Getable terrace in sixth gear or fifth if you've only got a five-speed gearbox 300 kilometers an hour 200 miles an hour break hard for the racetrack hairpin first gear 100 k's up to second to third to fourth into the paddock turn which seems to go going on left 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 forever then it straightens out a bit Rosberg there still in second place catching Senna fourth gear now 200 k's down to Mitsubishi corner the hairpin and the gap at the as they go through towards the end of the lap with Senna frantically looking at his mirror again he's down to 2.3 seconds and I'm just looking at Rosberg's tyres, and they look to be marking up a little bit the rears, but he's still catching Senna. And certainly, he's, he's had the charge. No, they look just getting a decent look. So you need to get the light right to see him, but the right rear has grained across half the tread. It's not as bad as Senna's, and I think Hickey really could afford to take it easy for a little while. He's got plenty of time left in this race. He ought to clean those tyres up by taking it easy and then have a go. I, I think, of course, it's very easy to sit here and hypothesise like that. Uh, those two chaps are out there in the very heat of battle and uh, it's a lot more difficult to make cool decisions. But Rosberg is lining up to attack Senna now. He's hauled him in pretty quickly. And uh, you're about to see a new leader, I think, on lap 62. Senna leading, Rosberg second, Alvaretto third, Lafitte fourth, Streff fifth. In sixth position, and there he goes, Senna it slows, and Rosberg goes through. And Kenny Rosberg, again, rightly, leads the Australian Grand Prix. And I think Senna's race is over. He's slowing right down. He's blown it. The turbo has gone on Ayrton Senna's Renault engine into the pits. He, it went at just the right point for him not to have to walk home because I have little doubt that Ayrton Senna will be getting out of the car as it goes up on the jacks. On go the new tyres. Steve Hallam talks to Senna through the headphones. Well, this is strange because they're showing every sign of going on. Maybe the mechanics don't realise what the situation is. Their reflex, of course, would be to get the jacks under the car. Off comes the top. Senna's race is effectively finished. They're having a look at the turbo. And I'm sure that they will decide that he is out. And the threat to Keki Rosberg, the immediate threat, is now removed. And it really is a case of bringing the car home. And Alvaretto is into the pits. It's all happening. Alvaretto, who was in third place before, but it, it was in a, the position of becoming second, had he passed the pits where Senna was stationary, is now into the pits stationary. Now, what's that going to mean? It's going to mean that Keki Rosberg leads, of course, and it's going to mean that Jacques Lafitte is up into second place. The Philippe Streff, his Ligier teammate, is up to third, and 
and sensational is that Ivan Capelli is going to go up to fourth place, Gerhard Berger up to fifth position, and Stefan Johansson to sixth place. So had Alvareto not gone into the pits, and if he can still get out, this could make things very, very interesting in the Constructors' Championship. Lap 64. Well, it looks very much now. Keki Rosberg now enjoys uh, over a minute's lead on Jacques Lafitte, so he can really stroke it home very gently uh, to the line, which he undoubtedly will do as soon as he's established that Senna has definitely gone. And uh, all he'll be doing is looking after the car and making sure he makes no mistakes, being very careful when overtaking back markers, and that. Uh, should be ample. Well, they're still working on Senna's car, but I wouldn't think, uh, unless they can do something pretty quickly, that he really is going to be able to get out of the circuit with any chance. Well, if Senna is out, this will, I reckon, be his tenth retirement of the year, and I have little doubt that if he hadn't had all those retirements, bearing in mind the fact that he was in a commanding position in every race when he retired, he would have been this year's world champion. You're looking at Jack Lafitte, who is now up into second place. The oldest man in the race, 41-year-old Jack Lafitte, in the Ligier on Pirelli tyres, is benefiting from the fact that Gerard Larousse and Michel Tetou left Renault last year and have been patiently working on the Ligier and have improved it to the extent that Senna leaving the pits have improved the Ligier to the extent that it is now very often in a points position and it would be a superb drive for the golf loving Jacques Lafitte who lives at Stoke Poges in England by the way unusual for a Frenchman voluntarily to live in England and he's in his 167th Grand Prix only Graham Hill and Nicky Lauda have driven in more Grand Prix than he has and when you saw Senna rejoining it was in 7th position we're on lap 65 now Rosberg leading, no Senna, and I notice, oh, he's pointing uh, to the left of this car, and that means pass me on the left, old chum, while I drive over the curb here, because I'm not looking where I'm going. So, away goes Ayrton Senna. What do you think, James? Absolutely right, that's exactly what he did do. Well, Sen Senna's having a funny old day. Funny enough, he came out of Formula 3 into Grand Prix racing with a reputation for immense talent, but some rather hairy driving under pressure, and we never saw that in Grand Prix racing, but we've seen about a season's dose of it all wrapped up into one race today, because he really seems to have uh, uh, taken semi-leave of his senses. Lap 65, and Rosberg is into the pits again! What a race this is! Keki Rosberg, the race leader. Are we going to see Jacques Lafitte go into the lead? What is Keki Rosberg doing to his tyres? He must have some sort of shredder on the back of the Williams. Well, that was the, that's the first bad start, the way he smoked, lit them up and smoked them away. They're obviously proving a bit fragile. The track problem is, you see, on a new track, the conditions change faster than on, obviously, a track that's well run in. And uh, we must be sympathetic to the tyre companies and everybody in that uh, you can't anticipate fast changes in track conditions. Senna back in the pits, but I think uh, his day's work is really over. He, the, the, the car, yes, he's out of the car, so that's uh, leaving the office and locking it up. So Rosberg, of course, could afford the luxury of that stop. He's, he's well in front. He had plenty of time to get in and out. And uh, he's now well equipped with nice new shoes on which should get him to the line because he won't even have to hurry. There is Jacques Lafitte. We'll get a clock on it to tell you what the gap is in just a moment. Yes, Jacques Lafitte. And, uh, they say of Jacques Lafitte these days he will drive as fast as the car will go. And very often the car won't go fast enough for this man 